Hello again, welcome to Nitro Talk. Today we're taking a look at this SH18 small block nitro engine. Uh, a lot of these uh, came in RTR vehicles like your Red Cats and stuff like that. Um, so there are a lot of these out there. Uh, I think they're pretty good engines. Uh, I've always kind of been partial to SH because the first nitro engine I was ever able to start and run was an SH, but that's another story for another day. Uh, this does not have a chrome plated sleeve, as you can see. It's uh, either you know, straight up nickel or like an ABN. Um, or ABL, I mean, sorry. Uh, an OS thing. I'm not really sure, but it's certainly not chrome plated. Um, this is a pull start engine, so you've got your one way bearing there. Uh, these will start to slip after uh, a time, they can start to slip. And uh, a lot of times, I've rarely had to replace one way bearings. You can usually give them a really good cleaning and get them to work good again give them a good cleaning and oil and uh, they will start to work grab catch again uh, like I said it's a 18 engine it's got a slide carburetor um, small blocks could either be slide carver carburetor or rotary carburetor which uh, speaking of, I have an upcoming video on a rotary carb mod that I came up with years ago for when your dust boot on your rotary carb is gone for whatever reason, dried up, cracked, broken, missing, whatever. Uh, those, they're getting harder to find nowadays and they're not cheap. You know, be lucky to get one 10 15 bucks if you can find one. Uh, but I found a way around uh, using the carb boot, um, it's a replacement that works great. Uh, I'll, I'm going to do a video on that shortly. Uh, let's start to uh, kind of throw this back together, take a look at it. You know, again, it's a small block engine, uh, 18 size. Uh, if you now, this is a drive washer. Um, these, if you have a propeller, uh, airplane engine uses these. Uh, also, these small blocks, for whatever reason, it's got a threaded crank and a drive washer, and then the flywheel goes on that. That's just how they do it on these. But this fly washer or uh, drive washer is on here really good. Looks like someone had tried to get it off before and didn't have any luck with it. So uh, the bearings are fine. It's spinning good and smooth, so I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, as you can see, the crank in there is pretty basic. Uh, no fangs or anything on it. Um so as I start to put this back together, always remember your cutout and your piston is for clearance of the crank. So that goes towards the crank, towards the front of the engine. And you just want to... Now this one, because it's a pull start, it has this extra nub right here. See it steps down and then you got this little extra piece that is to catch on the one-way bearing. So because of that, it's going to be a little more difficult to get the rod on. But if you are good at it, I'm going to make myself look a fool. Maybe not. You can get it on there pretty easily. Not too bad. All right, let's take that sleeve. Now, like I had said before, always spin your sleeves when you're putting it in. You don't want to just try to shove it in. Spin it. 
and then you look for your indexing pin there it is right there and that's the cutout on the sleeve where it meets up put the piston into the sleeve and it's gonna be a bugger in it there we go and then we can twisty slide that on down onto the pin. Looky there. All right, let's go back plate first. Now again, uh, one way bearing. Uh, what I like to do, I'll take the back plate, I'll get it set up. The cutout there is for uh, the piston. So that goes to the top. So I know it's gonna go right there. So let's say I put my piston halfway, like lined up with these two, uh, the engine mounts right there. Okay, so I'll line it up right there, halfway. So I'll do the same with the one-way bearing. I'll sit it in and set it halfway to where I should be able to put it in. And it goes right on and lines up nice and easy. Then uh, output shaft, I guess you would call that in uh, in output shaft. It's a put shaft of some sort uh, is going to go there. Let's go ahead and throw our screws in. Now you may notice these are two millimeter screws, but a lot of times, most times, I will use my. 564th driver uh, if they're used uh, and have a little bit of slop on them. If I put my two millimeter in them and I can feel a little bit of slop, uh, I will use the 564th because uh, it's a little bit bigger. It takes up that slop and uh, prevents the addition of more slop by using a even though it's technically the proper size driver it is now because the bolts are a little um, worn that it is now a driver that is too small anyways I'm a rambling mofo aren't I so we got these on here these don't have to be torqued all downtown Julie Brown just give them a good tighten always uh, crisscross pattern you know we, we know these things uh, let's go ahead and we can put the pull start on uh, these sometimes will have a spring in here this one might be missing because you can see it's got the, the cutout on both parts for a spring to be there um, but uh, just be careful, obviously, of course, when you're taking off pull starts, be real careful not to, this piece can come out of here, and if you, the spring in there, if you pop it, you're going to have a really bad day, so don't do that. Be careful with your pull start, make sure it stays inside there, and we'll throw that on, and we got some little Phillip screws here. For this back plate this is another thing that does not have to be super tight just good and snug for your pull start there we go for that one one more this is a three screw pull start Right now, last thing we have is to put on the head button and head, which I don't know if you can notice, and if anyone has looked at my other videos, this engine is in dire need of a Todd Turbo. As you can see, the glow plug has entered into the combustion chamber there pretty good. You can catch your nail on that lip there. So this needs a little bit thicker uh, copper washer to bring the glow plug down flat and make this more like a turbo plug. 
Uh, we uh, got our gasket, uh, head shim there, proper name for it. And we're gonna put that on, put our head on. And just like always, I like uh, some engines, the head button has holes in it as well, so that you have to line up the head button and the head before you can put the screws in. But ones like this, where uh, the head button doesn't have, the, the bolts doesn't go through the head button, uh, it's easier. All you have to do is line up the head itself. Trying not to block it because you really want to see me uh, screwing this in. Now you saw how that, see how that tips up when I do that? That's because uh, it's getting down to where it would be tight and you want to go crisscross applesauce, right? Uh, just barely snug, barely snug across, and then I'll throw my second two in, and I'll snug those down, not snug snug, but just barely to where you can feel it grabbing, right, and then go back to your first two so now you know you got four that are touching. None of them are tight, but they're touching. So they're holding it down even. The, the head is even now. So I can tighten these down without worrying of it torquing and bending, which is not good, of course. All right, so now that we've got this, you know, again, head bolts. I know I got a buddy at the track who literally puts his engine between his legs and double fist rah, torques down those head bolts. He's, I don't think you have to do that. Good and snug. I've never had a head come loose. Um, I've seen loose heads. I've seen uh, bubbling from, you know, the fuel oil bubbling out because the head is loose. I've seen that at uh, the track one time, but I've never had one of mine come loose. Just give it a good snug. That's all you need. So anyways, that is the SH-18 uh, nitro engine with slide carburetor, side exhaust. I didn't get into that. Uh, very few 18s have rear exhaust and 15s. You have some 12s that are rear exhaust because you have uh, some race 12s for touring cars uh, that are rear exhaust. As far as 15s and 18s, very, very few. I can't even really think of one off the top of my head that's rear exhaust. They're pretty much all side exhaust. Uh, so anyways, uh, stay tuned for the next video. See you guys next time. You have a good one.